And the big question for me is, why did Jesus go to John the Baptist to be baptised? <laughs> He's almost endorsing this Essene theology that, well, he does. He says, uh, you, need to, you need to be born again with living water. Um, and John the Baptist, the, the Essenes uh, were waiting for a Messiah. And John the Baptist, he, he ha really, he has to leave. He has to leave this, the monastery, if you call it that. And he has to go out and he's shouting, I'm waiting for him who will come after me. And Jesus turns up and says, baptize me, I'm him. Hmm. But they, they knew each other. They were only six months apart. Right. John the Baptist was six months older than Jesus. Um, well, it's all in the Bible. And, right. you know, it's, it's there for everyone to read. But the Essenes believed in angels. They had rites of purification. And their work was considered so important that at the fall of Jerusalem in 70, uh, 70 AD, their work was rushed, hidden into caves. Mm -hmm. uh, the caves at Qumran and later at Masadan. The big amphora with all their work in it was discovered in the 1940s, in the 1950s, and more recently the Nag Hammadi Gospels. And they are just, they just paint a completely different picture of the Jesus of the Bible, uh, far more esoteric. And it's much more in keeping with the Cathar heresy, I'll call it that. Although <laughs> a heresy is just something that's against the authorised version, isn't yeah. it? The Albigensians, the Matthians, it's much more in line with that. And yet here we're looking at not something that people have invented, but something that they've inherited that was around at the time of the Old Testament and the, New T and the beginning of the New Testament, they they died. The the Essenes died. The last Essene was killed at, at the siege of Masada in seventy A.D. The Romans massacred the last of them. But that that Gnostic that dualism has never died out. Mm -hmm. Still believed in sects all around the world. Yeah, and then I was after I was looking at the Essenes, I came across this short, um, just two sentences that the Chaldees were mentioned in these same sentences as the Essenes. So we're, we're starting to, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what was missed in history? Why didn't they follow this religious line of information? Um, I'd like to think we're the first that following it, and I certainly hope so. But tell us about the Chaldees. Okay, well... Um... I'm, I'm sorry to keep saying it, but back back to Sumeria again, where you've got the, which is now um, where modern uh, South South Iraq and Iran, that that whole area, uh, you had um, people who followed the Zoroastrian religion, which was uh, basically it was monotheistic, but it, it was also dualist it, that it believed there were forces of dark and light at work in the world, and uh, some of these. Um, in Sumerian were called Khuldi. And so, and some were called the Druze. And as they uh, migrated with their theology, if you will, across uh, the Middle East, up into what is the Iberian Peninsula and into Gaul, um, the, Roman, the Romans who they came across called them in their language, the Druids and the Chaldees. Hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. So then, I'm looking at this information, and then it just brought me, you know, when the Knights Templar, um, when the first uh, temple was sacked by the Babylonians, uh, they took anything and everything that they could carry, all the gold, precious stuff, and everything. Mm. When it was rebuilt, and then the Rome sacked it, whatever was brought back was was taken again. And then uh, ah, mo move ahead. So the move ahead to the 10th century, 11th century, 
Uh, the Pope says to the temple, the Templars, uh, nine of them, yeah, go to the temple. You can live in the stables underneath. And then they spent seven years of excavating. And I'm coming across this feeling that everybody says they were looking for gold and precious treasures in a menorah. But I think they were looking for the hidden scrolls, the 12 disciples, the Essenes, the Druids, all this work that they had put together. Yes. Um, and I suppose you can't l not mention the Ark of the Covenant because I'm trying to find, well, I can't think of the top of my head. There is a quote in the Bible. I think it was 578 that it was um, taken out of the temple. But then there's another quote later that it's taken to a mount, uh, to a cave in a mm -hmm. mountain, which has been identified as something in the uh, Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. Um, I, I don't know, but it, these things uh, were still around. They, they, they were these treasures, and I believe absolutely that that, scr that scroll is either to be found or or it, it is in safekeeping somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, of one of the one of the interesting things in, and it may be a bit of an aside, but. Um, John, the beloved disciple of Jesus, taught a man called Polycarp, mm. and he taught a man called Irenaeus, who lived in Asia Minor. And Irenaeus took his knowledge to Gaul, where he met with the Druids. So there, and so Irenaeus is one teacher away from Jesus himself. Wow. Wow. So one teacher away from Jesus ends up in Britain. Oh, that's fantastic. So the Christianity that was brought to Britain was absolutely unsullied because by the, what was happening with St. Peter in Rome was all going on up in Italy and Rome and they mm -hmm. were busy trying to build an empire. By the time Augustine came to Britain... Uh, Christianity was already well established in Britain and it was esoteric hmm. and it was such a threat to Rome that at the Synod of Whitby in the 7th century they had to um, get rid of it and at that time the Chaldee went underground and they went to Ireland but they, they were only um, disestablished in the 1500s from Ireland hmm. and became cells as they are now yeah if I think we're going to run out of time here, but Sarah, this is such fabulous information. Would you come back again for another interview?